time all for Christmas All the happy smiles and the wishes And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe Tell me one thing is Good morning guys and welcome back Today is Vlogmas Day 9 and guys today I'm actually outside and of course it snowed this morning as you can tell I am currently at Hydropolis so this is like a water exhibition museum something like this so that's why I'm here today it's right behind me there so we'll be going in today so uh, I'll be taking you guys along with me and yeah I currently have something 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 and something <laughs> okay so let's go inside and yeah okay so it opens from 9 to 17 and here we are I think I need to wear my mask So first of all, this is what it looks like when you pay the tickets and get inside. So today we are going to be learning about water, the history of hydro, hydraulic engineering, water, man, relaxation, the planet of water, just for us to get to know what the life of the ocean is like. I don't know if it's something that's interesting to you, but I'm someone who enjoys traveling. I'm someone who enjoys seeing nature knowing stuff so that's what we are doing here today i think i would also take you guys another day to the um the aquarium so we have an aquarium in the Wrocław uh, zoo so i'll take you guys there as well so we get to see the animals well for today we are just going to be learning a lot about water so let's go oh my Thank you. So they have a coat room. So of course, when you get here, you can take off your coat and drop it. And it's self-service. You could also drop your bags if you want. But in this case, I will be taking mine. So let's drop off the coat. Guys, we are starting the exhibition. In Hydropolis, the start of the exhibition goes this way. And we're following the light so the blue light on the floor which signifies the water so follow the water into the first place which is the planet of water where we'll get to know the theories and the origin of water in the universe and here we are in this room you have a tape that is literally explaining to you how water was formed and how the universe was bettered. So the oceans and the sea cover 70% of the earths and this water sculpts the land, the water in the air creates the climate, the water in the ocean flows in vast currents and as we know water pervades every form of life on earth. Now the mass of water on earth is barely small 2,000% of the Earth's mass is water, and if the Earth was rolled into a ball, the diameter would not stretch across the Baltic. The universe was born as a result of the Big Bang. The universe was at first a tiny atom, yet contained everything and it swirled energy and matter. Space and time were created in an instance. And in that instance, energy and matter congealed into a plasma of tiny particles. And in three minutes, they formed all the first atoms, hydrogen and helium, as though someone had spoken into the dark 
and fleshed out the wonders of light. And that was how the universe was formed. As though someone, something, a God bigger than the universe said, light be, and the atoms gathered into the clouds and clouds into balls to form stars. Nuclear fusion began, the stars burst into light in the blackness of space. And science was born, the universe was born, the world was created. Next, we have left the planet of water and now we are at temporary exhibition. That's what we have here. Over here we have the deep sea creatures. Now these are organisms that live below the photic zone of the ocean. Now these creatures must survive in extremely harsh conditions such as small amount of oxygen little food no sunlight and extreme cold some of the example of this kind of creatures are the vampire squid the pacific viper fish the giant frogfish the humpback angler fish what an ugly fish oh boy more ugly fishes Guys, when they tell you there are many fishes in the sea, this is what they mean. The ugly ones, the good ones, the bad ones. So be careful what you're fishing for. <laughs> okay, I don't know what is this, but let's step inside. Welcome to the Coral Reef Mobile Research Station. To begin, please follow the instructions. Press the highlighted button to turn on the battery. Guys, I'm, I'm so afraid. Now over here, we had this machine that was set up in order for you to help you get a feeling of what it what it's like to be submerged underwater through a submarine the instructions of course on the screen and once we hit the start button the simulation starts you get the feel of everything as as though you're under the sea the sounds the movements you can feel it's this tingling sensation Hi guys, I'm even feeling the, the tones, like my eyes, I feel like I'm actually underwater. Guys, people come here, students come here for classes. I think maybe, maybe biology classes or yeah, definitely biology. So that is like a class with their teacher explaining stuff to them, like an excursion kind of thing. Where are we? Uh, let's look at our map. I think right now we are at. We've I've lost track of where we are. Well, it seems like a history, a place with history. So let's find on the map what says history. Water and the city. I'm not sure, man. But schematic, yeah, it's all in. This is not even Polish. It looks like German. I'm in my headphones, so I cannot try to explain what is going on here because the app works with a Bluetooth connected to your headphones. And guys, I do not have any. 
so this is david michael angelo's david you can see this sculpture has water inside so this was so this was just to um show that the human body has like 60 percent of water and yeah they made a sculpture about it the information is right here right the nature part oh my god looks like we're in a garden guys my camera is not doing justice to what is happening right here i don't know why It even smells like a forest, like a, a garden or something. Ah, so let's sit here for a moment and relax and pretend that we are on a beach. What do you guys say? Nile, the longest river on the earth, River Nile. It has about six. It has about six thousand six hundred and fifty kilometers in length, and it flows through the northeast and the middle parts of Africa, passing eight countries and reaching the Mediterranean Sea. That's what this is. Memphis was founded by Pharaoh. It is one of the oldest and most important cities in ancient Egypt located at the entrance to River Nile. Guys, I don't think I can explain everything I'm learning here in one video. I would advise that you come and check it out if you're interested in this kind of stuff. So these are the rivers of the world. We have Nile being the longest Amazon Yangtze Mississippi and the list goes on and on and well in Poland we have Vistula and Odra River look at look at the length of Vistula and Odra River when compared to the Nile this is a graph showing how long they are <laughs> Whoa. So over here, I think we have, we are currently at the hydraulic, here, yeah, history of hydraulic engineering. And here we have a list of machines that are used in hydraulic engineering. The first one that we have here is the Hero engine. Now this is a radial steam tube which spins when the central water container is heated. The next one here we have a water wheel and this is a machine used to convert energy of flowing water into useful forms. Over here we have the Archimedes screw. Now this is one of the earliest hydraulic machines and this machine is used to transfer water from a lower lying body into water irrigation. And finally we have the water clock and water clock is used to measure time and time is measured by the regulated flow of liquid and over here of course you can see the different ships that carry cargo and we have this one Mersk, Marsk. this is the largest container shipping company and it ships about 12 million containers moved around the globe yearly over here we have the entire city of Rotswav and how it is linked together with water. So where you see the blue lines, that is River Odra. This is what it looks like. In my other video, I had gone to Sky Tower to look at the city from the top. Now I'm looking at <laughs> the city from here. You can't speak about Vrotswa without considering River Odra as this river runs through the entire city. Now Vrotswa has a history of flooding in 1997 where we had the Millennium Flood and now this accounts for a lot of canals and bridges in the city. Vrotswa has a total of over 150 bridges located around the city. 
The Odra River is the second longest river in Poland and it spans across three countries, Germany, Poland and the Czech Republic. Now River Odra has different tributaries and canals. Rivers such as Oava, Schleser, Vidava River, all are tributaries of River Odra and it contributes to the water distribution system in Wrocław, Poland. Where does the water in your tap come from? Now this is a very important question. The water is first of all supplied from the Oava River and the Nisa Kodja River to the Mihalov Vie. Now it is then transported to a pumping station and at this station the water is pumped to the watershed where the two rivers would go into an open transfer channel. Now this channel is about 27 kilometers long. Then the water is combined at a different station. The water is then transferred to a pumping station where the initial purification process occurs. The water goes through aeration, which is deacidifying the water, filtration, which is removing of particles, ozonation, which is the removal of organic compounds, sorption, which is using activated carbon filters to remove contamination from the water, disinfection, which is then introducing chemical compounds to deactivate microbes. Now this water is then pumped into a piping system that provides water for residential and commercial use in Wrocław. Now the next question that comes to mind is where does the used water go to? So the used water would go through a sewage pumping station. Now this sewage network in Wrocław, we have 40 of them and each of them are located by the banks of River Odra. In the sewage pumping stations, repurification of water is done. Now the grates are first used to remove solids from the wastewater and then the sand separator is used to remove any grainy suspension from the wastewater. Up next, the water goes to the primary sedimentation tanks where any suspension that reaches the sewage treatment plant is fermented. Now in these chambers, we have fermentation done and uh, fermentation usually takes about 20 days and it's been fermented at 35 to 38 degrees Celsius. During the fermentation, we have biogas produced and this biogas may be used for power applications and electricity is generated from this gas. After this, we go to the active splodge chamber where the organic compounds are removed and then it is processed to the secondary clarifies where active molecules are separated from water. And when all of this purification process is done, purified water leaves the sewage treatment plant and it is introduced back to River Odra. You need to know that the water that is reintroduced back to the river is pure and has no negative influence on the water in the river. Guys, did you know that there are no two identical snow chicks? Did you also know that snow, snow is not quiet? The white color we see is the light reflected by the ice crystals which form snow. Did you also know that snow and glacier contain 80% of all the resources of potable water? Water of fire. They're standing before fire from water. So guys, that was it. I need to stand under the light so you see me. So guys, that was it for Hydropolis. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to like, share, comment. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.